Houses are complicated, designs are complicated, and there's a lot of different materials and large quantities and sometimes small quantities of different materials that go into a house. So the old days where you could do a rule of thumb and do a calculation as to how much lumber to order, or the old days when you had a den that was 10 feet by 10 feet and you put 12 inch square tile in there, those days are long gone. So you need a software like Dietrich that can keep up with the design advancements and the product specifications that are going into today's home. So with Dietrich at the click of a mouse, your architect can kick out your quantity takeoffs of different materials. And if the client says, you know, I don't know if I want a cobblestone pattern versus a herringbone pattern, your architect, the designer behind the Dietrich software, can click out both options for you, give you an immediate calculation as to what those quantity differences will be in the same space, which enables you to, in real time, present to the client at least, at a minimum, the cost and material quantity impacts of those two different decisions. That could be inside the house or that could be outside the house. A client that says, I'm thinking about a wood siding or perhaps a stone veneer maybe a composition shingle roof or a clay tile roof. With a software like Dietrich, you can do those calculations immediately and know the real-time cost difference between those selections. Apart from the build-up and the material specs, the wall property is already linked with a parametric guideline that defines what kind of structure this wall is going to be. So that's my wall construction guideline right there. Here I have a couple of different guidelines again in a library that I can select, but this one will do for this wall buildup. And with that guideline now, I can just go to construct the wall, select the walls I want to have done, and the parametric, guide parametric guideline will just add the stick framing, the details, and the sheathing for me. Keep the wall properties the same. And you can watch the guideline applying all the settings. And here you can already see the framing in a transparent view. I'll quickly go to the display filter and reduce that just to show group zero, which is the framing. And there you can see the individual lintels, studs, the header detail. So now I can isolate one individual wall. Go to ground floor, find the wall we've just been working on. That's number nine here. And this will isolate that one wall, show me an elevation and a section view. And I can start to edit the window. Now this will show you the power of the parametric guideline because if I just go into systems for the window and uh, select a different lintel detail, a header. So I have a couple of header details in here. Go to my two by eight double header. Okay and position the window again. And all I have to do now is just rebuild that wall. Go to systems. Get this ribbon out here because I'll need it again. And go construct this wall, same routine as before. Keep the wall properties. This will rebuild the structure from scratch. And I have a entirely different header detail applied. So if I turn that into a 3D view here, can get a better shot at the header detail. That's double headers here. So like that, I can just pick out the detail I want to have for this cause. So just to show you another change, I'll change the size of the window now. Go back to the window, go to the rough opening and just make it wider. Go from six feet two inches to eight feet three inches. You can see the preview changing right away. Okay, I'll grab the center of the window to 
keep that in the same place and position it right where the original window was. So now you can see how the window size changed. The structure didn't follow yet. And again, I just hit the Construct button. OK, keep the wall properties. And that will again reconstruct. So there's a very fast way of parametrically changing things, editing windows, like things that normally happen on site. Client wants a different window. And with a matter of a couple of mouse clicks, that's edited. Of course, we have the entire wall built up in here. So I just go and show you the plywood with it. Go to a different visual style here, so it's easier to see. Go to textures, so that we have the plywood on the outside, individual sheets, inside the stick frame. Then go back to my display filter. So then we have the insulation. That's my EPS panels. So the total structure of the wall with all materials, everything is included. Also on the inside, my gypsum board is right there. Header for the floor joist is already there. If I go back to the floor plan now, I can show you why it is essential to have a 3D model. I'm just going to bring in the floor plan from the architect again. And uh, over here in the great room, there's a couple of big floor joists. That's a, those are going to be visible afterwards. And they're bearing on two walls. And on this wall here, we have a huge, big opening, bifold doors. Very nice, but our floor joists have nothing to bear on. So if I go back to wall design of that wall, you can see the floor joist here sitting on top of the wall. And there's not an awful lot of support. That double header is probably not going to do it. So instead of taking the guideline and letting it run over again, I'll just show you a graphic change here and delete all those components that I don't need. So the header detail, the posts, and the cripple studs. And those need to go as well. And I'll manually add the components that I need. So I'll need vertical beams, general post. And this is not going to be a 2x6. This is going to be substantially bigger. So I go back to 4x6 here and place a single one on either side of the opening. OK. Then I'll need two regular studs, 2 by 6, right next to the posts. The posts I need to cut back to the top edge of the opening. So I'll quickly show the top edge of the opening permanently here and cut them off at exactly that level. This end goes away. So now I have a big room up here where I can put a header detail in, horizontal beam. And uh, this is not going to be structural timber. I go back to my material database, and I can find the right material for that job. So this could be, for example, a white flange steel beam that could carry all those loads. But since I want to stick with a timber design, I go to laminate to timbers and find a good glue lamb that will also do the same job and still be sustainable material. So there's a three foot length, five and a half inches wide. And the height I'll take directly from the model to fill that gap entirely because I need to custom order that piece anyways. It could just as well fit the space. So that's one foot three and five eighths. And put a single piece in there. It starts with a three foot piece and then it stretches to find the next available timber to connect to. And on the right hand side, you can see how it put that header detail in. So that's 
You can see it on the texture, it's a laminated beam, and that should take care of the loads coming from the floor joists and will carry the walls above. I think it's important that people have an understanding of what their competition is. And in Southern California, in the LA area on the west side, there are a lot of custom home builders. And so what we think is a big differentiator for Structure Home is the ability to use a software program like Dietrich. We think Dietrich really gives us a leg up on the other custom home builders in the Los Angeles market because of its capabilities.